So here we are in the workshop and today we're messing around with this Eversolar TL1500 grid tie inverter. So let's focus on this. So here we are and the first thing to do is, I know what's wrong with this, but I want to take the top off first before we start messing. So just here there are little some little gaps and you can just pop the this plastic cover off and as you can see just there hopefully you can see there's that grip there and that right there so when you push in there really all you're doing is levering that and making that spring backwards and then what we have here and I've already removed one of them but there are four torque screws one two three four so we just remove those and there we are as you can see this just removes but the screen is still there which is useful now what I thought we'd do to start with is to just fire it up and you're thinking how is he going to do that well just bear with me and I will show you so here we've got a variac with the adjustment so the mains goes into that and it comes out of this and it goes into this isolation transformer now this is a nominal 415 to 110 volt isolation transformer. So the output of the Variac goes into the 110 side. And then the output of the 0 to 380 goes to this rectifier. And that rectifier is suitable for voltage up to 400 volts which is fine. Then the positive and negative out of there go along to this block. And I wonder if you can just see, yeah, just here, that is a 60 microfarad non polarizing, i.e., AC, but non polarizing capacitor. That just smooths everything out. And the output of this positive and negative goes straight to the grid tie inverter. So we have a mains stroke DC supply that is isolated from the mains. Isolated through the isolation transformer and again through the rectifier. So we can put DC into the um, the grid tie. We can also put a main supply from the mains into the grid tie. Now when I tried this first I thought well this grid tie is not working so let's give it a go and because of all the isolation it works so let's just fire that up and we can see what's happening on the screen so let's just plug the variac in first so that's the, the variac plugged in main switched on And there it is so we've got no, no utility whilst before we go any further let me just show you what the DC voltage is so that's the meter and it's set on a thousand volts DC positive negative 230 volts DC so that's fine so now I'm going to plug in the mains supply and if you can see there there was various clicks one of them was the relay that's underneath here 
let's zoom in on that supply on that there we go and then there's a countdown 160 159 seconds etc well it's checking itself now I'm not going to force you to watch all of that So here we go, three, two, one. Relay check fail. Okay, now apparently that's a standard thing. And apparently it's the output relays. But I'm not too sure. But there's only one way to find out. And as far as I can tell, the output relays are... there so what i propose to do is try and get the covers off those i think I might, a bit of violence may be required i don't actually want to take the whole board out yet so if i can just gently take those plastic covers off i can see what's inside there doesn't actually stop them working because at the moment this unit doesn't work and it's gone back to checking again. Now then, just a point of order here. Uh, just there, there's a fuse. That's a mains fuse. And that far end of it there, I checked it with a multimeter, and there's mains power at that far end of the fuse. And there's the relay. The other thing is, see this big alley block here? There's a potential of about 110 volts on that. Okay, on that outer case. So if you go between there and earth, you get 110 volts. And when I tested it with the multimeter on AC milliamps, you got 3 milliamps between there and earth. Now I've got another one of these inverters and it's working perfectly and it has the same potential. So don't touch it. As in don't touch that fuse when you've got the main switched on or any of the bits in here. You just understand we're messing here. We know there's lots of nasty bits and pieces so we're not going to poke our fingers in everywhere. I mean lots of the... Um, more aggressively safety thinking uh, viewers will think I don't like that lot well I agree with you but this is we're just experimenting yeah most of the DC uh, is covered up you have to put screwdrivers in things to get to that DC anyway what we're gonna do is have a go at those relays and see what happens i did put a piece of dowel against those and against my ear and when this finishes on the check-in they do click so it could be that the contacts in there are burnt out there's only one way to find out a certain amount of aggression later there are the two relays and hopefully can we zoom any more no that'll do let's see what we can do now this contact here is quite burnt but I've actually bent things and when this activates it just it does touch but this one here is very burnt and so is that so when it pulls in it doesn't touch hopefully you can see this gap here it's of about oh sixteenth of an inch so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bend a few things bend that there bend that there they touch bend this forward a bit bit too much that one's a bit too much we need a gap right 
Okay, hopefully you saw that. If not, well, tough. So let's fire it up again and see what happens. Right, back to the screen and plug things in. Plug the DC in. Contact. And plug the AC in. Wait for the DC to fire up. There we go. What does it say? Waiting. Utility loss. Plug the AC in. And then what I'm going to do is we'll just have a look at these relays. Now that clicking was the relay underneath here. So now we can just it's 161 seconds, so we'll just pause for a minute. Three, two, one. Ah. Interesting. So I've cleaned the uh, contacts on these relays and let's see what happens. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Well, something happened there. Well, the contacts are closed after cleaning them twice and adjusting them. And there we go. So it's a bit weird, but this inverter is running off the same power supply. But of course, the DC side is isolated, rectified, all and smoothed. But there you go, we have the inverter working again. So those two, wherever they are, relays need changing. Result. And if we turn the variac up, I don't want to turn it up too much. Let me turn it down. So you can see that I'm not telling you porkies. Turn it up. There we go. Job done.